Good. Okay, we're on. We're on live. Okay, so um, yeah, so um, this is. I uh, just wanted to uh, speak a little bit, like if you're a comedian, and um, and you're and you're <clears throat> you're practicing the observer, and you're you're standing in front of audiences, and uh, in the observer, quite often, what happens if you keep going to the observer is you lose the capacity to track information. Because when, you, when you're uh, in the ego, the more you're in the ego, the more the ego is able to track information. So it's like analyzing, watching, uh, picking up feedback from people's yeah. faces. You know, it's taking in all the detail and it's trying to focus and, and assimilate tons of information from the level of the ego. Yeah. As soon as you go to the observer of the ego, then um, the, uh, the observer, the, you get, can go to the interested observer of the ego, which is tracking some information. And then if you go to the detached observer of the, uh, of the information, then even less information is tracked from an ego level. So hence, when you're start, you know, if you're trying to do comedy initially, if you're practicing being in the observer, um, what will tend to happen is at the end of your gig, not much will be remembered because the the observer doesn't try and track information from the past to the future. So everything that comes out, you know, like, I'll often not remember things that have happened a few minutes ago, because it's like, even when you're in the observer, you don't want... The whole point of the observer is not to be in your head, trying to remember the past or anticipate the future. Mm. So, um, uh, so it happens... So the ego functions happen less and less. And especially um, remembering things becomes more and more difficult. Now... There's a few things you can do uh, if you're um, wanting, let, let's say you're a comedian and you're wanting to uh, retain information on the basis of like, oh, which jokes did I say were good and were the audience responding a lot to that particular joke and not to that joke and you want that sort of uh, uh, analysis or feedback at the end of uh, a gig. Um, so there's, there's a few things, one, there's a few different approaches. I would actually use a mixture of approaches. Now one of the things is, um, if, I, if I want to be more in my ego, I, I just need to focus on retaining information more. So it's more like one is um, trying to pick up people's faces, pick up whether they're laughing at jokes, and then this sense of time starts to... Uh, manifest and it's almost like you can start to remember things much more so you're, you're tracking information and the memory <coughs> of information becomes better after a gig now the problem is if you the more you um, the more you try and identify with thoughts and people's faces you're actively trying to focus on your thinking actively trying to focus on people's uh, facial expressions and you're actively trying to track time to know uh, are they liking the jokes in the beginning and not so much? And so you're now identifying with a lot of uh, form. So you can do that, you know, it's okay to do that in a gig. But then if it, act, but then probably uh, you, uh, you can get the feedback that you need. Okay, they liked my second joke a lot. They didn't like my third joke a lot. In the second joke I saw everyone was like laughing and falling off their seats. The third joke, they looked all confused, like they didn't understand it. So then you have the information at the end of the gig, okay, ne next week, you know, I'm going to use that joke, I'm not going to use those type of jokes. And then, um, that's probably useful in the uh, intermediate stages, but then later you're always going to be transcending that, you know, and some of the gigs, you're going to be in the observer and not really caring uh, whether they like the jokes, and you'll be in the timeless thing. At a certain point, um, a kind of an integration occurs because sometimes when you go and sometimes you transcend your ego but then you you got some information and as you transcend that information being important so that you're not going to the next gig trying to remember it and trying to be an ego then what happens is uh, later on um, in the observer things will happen much more spontaneously and intuitively without the need to track information like with a lot of the spirit, like we were talking earlier in the group, a lot of the spiritual teachers are naturally very, very funny. Mm. And they're not tracking or identifying with information from the level of ego. Because um, in the observer, all of the world, all of life is hysterically funny. You, know, you can just see 
from a certain point of view, when you're detached from the drama of everyone's huge identifications and suffering, and yeah. when, you're, when you're observing, it, it is very humorous to them. So they are naturally very funny without the need to learn humor. But their humor comes from a timeless, eternal place. So, so they're, they're, they're naturally funny without needing to go to comedy school or needing to track the information. I know with Hawkins, he's like, you can sort of see with some of his jokes, he'll sometimes get up and do a little, a little dance in front of the whole audience and just giggle. And, and he's like, you can tell he's not tracking the information of the audience or trying to make them laugh. That's just coming out of his beingness, yeah. uh, out, of, yeah. out of the infinite. And sometimes he'll laugh at people who are thinking they're relaying very serious information to him. You know, but he'll crackle with laughter. I remember when I went to see him, and I said I had kidney failure, uh, you know, help me to, you mm -hmm. know, to, to heal this uh, heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he, he, uh, what did he say? He said, like, try all of this stuff, and if it doesn't work, I'll see you on the other side. And he laughed hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed hysterically. And then, and, then, and then there was so much power in that yeah, yeah. humor that, yeah. that even, though he didn't, even though if you just read the words, you wouldn't get it. But in that catalytic energy of him just laughing about death um, and seeing the humour of it, suddenly I, was I had to laugh as well, you know, and I saw that it was like I got his, his perspective that actually it's like, so what, you know, and actually you d that's not really the death of the body, it's not the, the death of your eternal soul, and you'll probably meet Hawkins, just laugh about the whole thing. And he sort of sees death as a kind of a humorous thing, because it, you know, so, so, so you come from those authentic places which are not, when you're in the new stages, your ego is very much identified, like, okay, I need to know the good jokes, I need to track the audience liking the jokes, and I must remember which jokes the audience didn't laugh from. And so, um, I think there's a, you know, that, that's also fine for a while, but then transcend it, so that you don't get overly hooked into your ego analyzing the whole thing, because also, the more identified with your ego, the more serious you tend to get. I know mm, that if I'm get, yeah, if yeah. I'm like, okay, I've got to make everyone laugh. I've got to like yeah, watch everyone's face. Energy got to, is very heavy. Yes. Yeah. The energy Even is very are, heavy. Yeah. They always Yeah. Superficially. That's right. So, yeah. well, so you can sort of like you can do that and then transcend it and then trust or or track information and then it will evolve. But generally speaking, the higher your level of consciousness, the more funny you'll get. Because um, also you rate, you are connected to an energy field, which the audience can get. You see, so mm -hmm. people who are very strong, they, they don't radiate much light. They don't, you know, like mm -hmm. in if I go and see a spiritual teacher, I'll just be happy and, and blissed out, even if they don't say anything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're you're already just your presence is already uplifting mm -hmm. the thing. So yeah. even if they, people will just get a good feel. From you, not I mean, not, not laugh, but they love you. You see, so all, <laughs> yeah. all of those things are, and and so you know, so all of those things um, are, are things I would do in terms of like, yeah, tracking it. You can do that. I think there is a thing. It's like uh, often mm -hmm. when you um, have transcended all your fears and your worries. Uh, I think if you're like doing gigs and there's a lineup. You can, you can go into competition mm. as well. Like I don't want to be the last. I don't want to be the worst one. But no one <laughs> laughed, and they're probably gonna. Everyone's gonna say at the end like who's the best and who's the worst. Mm. So again, you know, uh, trying to go to the observer of that, trying to feel if there's a lot of feelings sitting and allowing those feelings to to release. Um, if you get like tr hooked, you know, like someone makes a bad comment in the middle of a gig. Then you know, going you know, just practicing going to the observe. But each time you do that, you know, I think anyone doing spiritual work is learning about transcending. Mm. So you want to eventually be able to be in the observer and be happy and free, um, be witnessing, even if the audience doesn't like you at all, mm. and that's okay. Like everyone's throwing rotten tomatoes and you're staying in the observer. That's okay, and and then you get that, then you get that, um, then you get that fearlessness. You can be in the observer, and it's okay. And that also tends to, to do, um, to to gender, you know, a greater sense of spontaneity, allowing God to be the the, the joker, rather than the ego to be the joker. I think um, for, there's different there's different levels there's different levels of, of uh, consciousness. I mean, I know 
I'm not a comedian, but I know I try and uh, love, love the audience or be of service to the audience. Um, or I'll sometimes do this thing of just trying to go in, you might try these, I don't know if they'll work for comedy, like be in the field of oneness, you know, so rather than be, rather than you're um, a body with thinking and their bodies with thinking, you become the, the field of oneness and love, you see, in the sea. And that will give you a greater sense of connection. If you're feeling like you're in the observer and you're not connecting with the audience, feeling that oneness with the audience. Because sometimes you might, you know, it might be that if you're feeling any form of detachment. But even if you're feeling a form of detached, like you're not connecting to the audience, you can also go to the observer which is aware of disconnection. Or you can try and feel out the disconnection. Eventually that will resolve that dualistic perception. So that means you can be the observer and oneness at the same time? Uh, you see, the, the, obser the observer, there is a field where you don't even need to use words. Like the oneness and the observing is the same thing. I.e., um, observing tends to give um, a connotation of there is an observing, observing and observed. So it tends to give a dualistic connotation. Like I'm in the position of the observer and that's a position observing objects. So it gives a kind of a dualistic, but if you keep doing the observer until uh, the, you don't need, you, you know, there is just oneness, or there is just isness, or there yeah. just is what is. And even, because the, the way I explain self-inquiry or observing, so is to detach from identification, and then that naturally, you don't, then eventually you don't need to do that any longer. It becomes a natural thing where that dualistic split uh, goes. So if I'm, so initially if I'm identified with my body in the early years, then I'd go to the observer of the body and then eventually if I keep being the observer of the body, then that attachment to being hooked into me being a body starts to dissolve and eventually I don't experience body. Mm. And then, and then I no longer need to practice being the observer of the body, it's, a, it's dissolved, so it's served its purpose. But if I'm practicing being the observer of the body in the early time, then it's almost like it's a practice or there's an observer and a body. So it feels like a dualistic rather than the isness of there is no body, which is a higher level of, of consciousness. Mm. So you, you, you do that, you do those things uh, with comedy. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure for me, it's just bringing up all the things your ego hooks into competition, people, whether people like you. So you're just transcending that uh, bit by bit. Uh, and learning and then transcending and eventually trusting that uh, being in the observer like God's the, the ultimate comedian you know will, I'm pretty sure God will be the ultimate comedian because the more you're hooked into ego the more you're worried about your performance and comparing and despairing but it, it's okay in that way